yo man yo man yo we're back and better who i am i'm a kill naps i like to react to videos i like to get to know new sports but today man we got how england football league is breaking the sport let's get into it on February 3rd, 2023, in London, the English football club, Chelsea, played a home game against a rival, Fulham. The game ended in a scoreless draw, but Fulham's fans were so excited they stayed to chant after the game. Soon, these words were in articles all over the world, because in just one month, Chelsea had spent 329 million euros on new players more money than all the clubs in the French, Italian, German, and Spanish football league spent combined. See, the one thing I heard about Chelsea is I heard Chelsea is like trash. Like I heard like, the, I, don't know, I don't know if they usually be good, but I heard Chelsea is like trash for real, like they're trash. You have a club like Chelsea, and they think they can do everything. I mean, it's an extraordinary amount of money. But it's what Chelsea's owners believed it needed to do in order to succeed in the most competitive, most popular, and richest football league in the world, the English Premier League. The English Premier League, these sums of money are just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. The problem is that the Premier League's clubs have grown so rich that the rest of Europe can't keep up. It's very difficult to be competitive against English clubs. It is so far ahead of all the other leagues. The gap seems to be widening. So how did the English Premier League get so rich? And how is that a problem for Europe's favorite sport? How many single family gave me an ad already? <laughs> That's crazy. I need to start by explaining how football works in Europe. <laughs> Starting in England around the 1860s, people began organizing official football clubs and playing each other. Eventually, they divided these clubs into a tiered system. The worst clubs played down in these leagues and the best up here but clubs could move within this system. At the end of each season, the bottom two clubs in a league would be demoted to the league below, a punishment called relegation, but the top clubs would be promoted up. It puts a competitive edge to everything. This is James Corbett, a senior Wait, reporter at- is that still a thing or did they take it away? Is that, is that still a thing for my people that watch football, English football, like, is that still a thing? Like the top two teams go to the, to the is that still a thing or is that like no more? Cause I like I know about football, but I'm really not really into like football like that. But I support Man United. You know what I'm saying? Now y'all might think Man United the trash, but I support Man United because I mean yeah, y'all probably don't really care. But when I play what FIFA 12, Wayne Rooney, that's his name, right? Wayne Wayne Rooney, he played for Man United. And he he was my favorite player in FIFA and FIFA 12. Not even lying, FIFA 12, he he was my favorite player in FIFA 12. So at that point, I, I literally started supporting, uh, started supporting uh, Man, uh, Man U, Man United, you know what I'm saying? Off pitch. You know, effectively, you could have a village club that might be in tier 10 of English football, and if you do the right things, you know, they could be playing in the first division within a decade. You do have those fairy tale stories. Wimbledon, sixth in the first division in their first season in the top flight, on the verge of a football fairy tale. By the mid 20th century, these five leagues in the biggest five countries had most of the best players and therefore the best clubs. But every year, the best club from every league would play each other in a big tournament, at first called the European Cup. It was an opportunity for clubs in any country to win big. In the 1980s, clubs from 16 different country leagues reached the semifinals, and in that period, a Portuguese, Dutch, and even a Romanian club won. He saved it again! He's unbeatable, it? And Romanians have won the European Cup! But football was about to change, and it began in England with a tragedy. On April 15, 1989, 700 people were injured and 96 killed at a game in Sheffield, England when yeah. poor crowd control and stadium design led to a stampede. It was the low point for English football after a disastrous decade. English stadiums were falling apart and attendance at matches was plummeting. And English clubs were banned from European tournaments after a fight between fans killed 39 in 1985. 
well, English football was a game in decline. You had writing. See, that's you the had... thing, right? If you're like a sport or anything like that, you have to make sure you have some good stadiums, some good support, because you you never know. Like you just never know. People that send away up here, you just never know, bro. You know what I'm saying? You just never know. Hooliganism. You had racism. It was um like an epicenter for all of society's ills. Disputes between clubs and television broadcasters resulted in none of the English top leagues games airing on television during the 85 and 86 season. So many of England's best players fled to play in the other European leagues. By 1990, a few people were desperate to turn things around, specifically the owners of England's five richest and most popular clubs. Arsenal, Arsenal. Manchester. Manchester United, Manchester United. Yes, sir. And Liverpool. Big man, clubs wanted Liverpool, a bigger share of broadcast revenues, centralized marketing. You know, they saw the benefit of that in US sports. And essentially, they saw, they saw an opportunity. In 1992, they led a group of 22 clubs to break off and form a new league called the Premier League. And they designed it to be English football's resurrection. It's a whole new The Premier League served as the new top league in English football. It controlled its own TV rights, which it sold for 427 million euros to a satellite TV company. Cash that the clubs then used to find new ways to make money and modernize the game. They renovated and built new stadiums that could fit more fans. And they started selling sponsorships and merchandise all over the world. But it was satellite TV that made the biggest difference, allowing the games to be broadcast to new audiences like in the US and Asia. The Premier League was able to more than double the price. See, that's right. smart. That is smart. Because, like, sometimes, like, for me, I'll be trying to watch some games, like the Premier League, and sometimes they don't have it on TV. Like, sometimes they have it on TV, but sometimes, because you know how the U.S. and England, like, the time difference is different. So I think you guys are, like, what, like, eight hours ahead of us, right? So it'd be different, but, like, like if I see a game on, I'm going to watch it if I see it. Oh, I don't care what, what team it is, I'm, I'm going to watch it, you know what I'm saying? Because what I want to do is I really want to learn uh, new sports and just new, like, sports to watch, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm used to watching NFL, NBA, MOB, uh, uh, hockey. I don't watch hockey, but that's really, you know, what we'll beyond. Like, saying, I really want to get back to soccer. We call it soccer, but football for you guys. Um, rugby, like, stuff like that. Like, I, I like watching the rugby videos, and I like watching videos on football as uh, you guys call it in rugby because it's it's interesting to get to know something that you have really you have really noticed just because there's different sports in each country you know what i'm saying so if you guys want me to watch anything comment down below what you guys want me to watch things which whatever it's rugby afl whatever it is let me know down below because i i, I want to know you guys sport i want to know you guys sport because i found it rugby this seems fun to me and this seems fun to me too so let me know down below in 1997 and again in 2001. It is one of the great success stories in global sport. Crucially, the Premier League divided its TV revenue relatively equally between clubs, which made them more competitive. Spain, Italy, and Germany all gave more TV money to its most successful clubs, which let a few dominate year after year. By 2004, the Premier League had successfully turned English football around, becoming the wealthiest league in Europe and some very rich people were noticing. Hey, I'm Sam Ellis, and welcome to Search Party. I'm going to really quickly say thank you to today's sponsor, Incogni. <laughs> uh, he think he's slick. <laughs> he think he's slick, huh? But think he's slick with that. Hey, that's a good ad, though. This is Roman Abramovich. He's a Russian businessman who, back in 2003, was worth almost 10 billion euros, and he wanted to buy a football club. He settled on a West London club named Chelsea, which was in deep financial trouble. <laughs> Uh, my bad. To all my Chelsea, to all my Chelsea's fans, my bad. I ain't mean to lie. My bad. I'm so sorry. Y'all. My bad. I ain't mean to lie. My bad, y'all. I ain't mean to lie. He my paid bad. around 199 million euros for the club and to relieve its debt. Then immediately injected millions more of his own money to buy almost a dozen excellent players from clubs in the Premier League and across Europe. Even while the club lost money, he added more. That was the big moment because he came in and he had a level of wealth that was just beyond anything 
that the Premier League had ever seen before. Chelsea quickly won the Premier League in 2005 and 2006 and began consistently qualifying for and advancing deep into the all-European tournament, since renamed the Champions League. See, now, not, I'm not laughing. I'm just laughing at the part that... I don't know what I'm talking about. Chelsea... Didn't Chelsea used to be good and then now they're kind of shit now? Or is Chelsea, like, kind of better now? Because I... When I see like football, like football videos or like FIFA videos, it's like they're saying like Chelsea is like the worst football premier club. So I, I don't know if like they're trying to get back to what it used to be or or people don't want to play for Chelsea or, you know what I'm saying? Because now I really see people repping Liverpool, Arsenal, Man City, Man United, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm not really seeing people really rep Chelsea like that unless like, I don't know. But like, can you let me know? Because I might be confused on some parts, because I know a little bit, but I don't know it that well how you guys know it. If you guys from like England and France and Germany are saying, if you guys watch sports like Bramovich that. Bramovich proved that you could buy success in the Premier League, and it encouraged other owners to try it for themselves. Throughout the 2000s, a new class of wealthy and mostly foreign owners began buying and pumping millions into Premier League clubs. It helped that at first, the Premier League had very few rules on who could buy a club and how much they could spend on it. Premier League has always been sort of quite non-interventionist. Any investment as, as good investment. So these new owners began making the already rich clubs richer, while others boosted some smaller clubs into notoriety. Sheikh Mansour bin Syed Al Nayan was a member of oil-rich Abu Dhabi's royal family, who in 2008 bought Manchester City. Yeah, Man City moved okay. it up another notch because you had the resources, not just the wealth, but the resources of a nation state. He spent over 1.7 billion euros over the next 15 years on the best players, coaches, staff, and facilities from all over Europe. And of course, it worked. I mean, that is true, though. You never really have really, I never really have, I've never really had really like heard about Man City really until like recently a little bit. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Because people people always knew about Man United, probably because of Wayne Rooney. That's how I know about Man City. Not Man City, uh, Man United because of Wayne Rooney. He was my favorite player on FIFA 12, you know what I'm saying? Because of Wayne Rooney, you know what I'm saying? People know about, you know what I'm saying, uh, Chelsea and stuff like that. But I don't think people really knew about Manchester City. Now Manchester City is probably one of the best teams, right? Manchester City is probably one of the best teams, right? Or am I wrong? I don't know. I don't know. There probably is. I think so. Man. I think so. Arsenal is a good one, too. Look at that. 2010, 2012, 2014, 2018. Look at that. See how they gotten better? It's about the right person putting money into the club. Now, all these other clubs that's like low, the people that know about, it takes one person to buy the club and to build it up, and they can be like the Manchester cities and the Uniteds and the Liverpools and the Arsenal, you know what I'm saying? This strategy helped spark an arms race in the 2010s. Clubs started spending more and more each year to sign the best players and keep up with each other. While many of the rich clubs could afford to lose money on expensive players, many smaller clubs couldn't. It created huge inflationary pressure, not just in terms of transfer fees, but in terms of player salaries. And they effectively pulled the rug from under the feet of other clubs and it became harder for clubs promoted into the Premier League to afford to stay there. Clubs have massively overspent trying to get into Premier League. In 2013, the Premier League adopted rules that were designed to encourage clubs to break even. But they didn't slow down the spending because these clubs were in a lucrative cycle. As wealthy owners spent millions to bring the best players to the Premier League, more fans, especially international ones, wanted to watch it, which generated more TV money which gave clubs more money to spend on more players. By 2022, the Premier League had 11 of the that's 20 what I mean, like, this, this is what I mean, like, right here. These two teams, Newcastle, West Ham, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like, I feel like the Premier League, I feel like all the teams can be, like, good. It's just, you know, some top teams, like these teams up here. But I feel like these teams, you know what I'm saying, could be, like, the best, though. You know what I'm saying? Well, like, I'm not not the best. I mean, like, the bottom two teams that you don't really see or talk about, they can be good, too. Just they need the right person to, to put their money in and to grab the best place from other countries and bring them that money. Because money talks. 
if, if the money's right, the, they will come, you know what I'm saying? They will, you know what I'm saying? Just football clubs in the world. And as far as revenue, the Premier League clubs brought in over 3 billion euros more than Germany and Spain's top leagues, and more than double France and Italy's. So by 2023, the Premier League was on a spending spree that Europe's other clubs just couldn't match. Something Chelsea made obvious in 2023. Transfer deadline date and Chelsea have locked down a British record transfer. Spending of $357 million in January. La Liga president has launched a scathing attack. The British market is a doped market. This can jeopardize the sustainability of European football. Do you think we're going to see a time when the Premier League's ever equal by Wait, um, any of the I'm not positive so much, but when I pause, I'm just really trying to really learn about the game and get better because I know y'all know, I don't know if this video will do good or not, but if y'all watch this, like, if y'all know really about football, I'm pretty sure y'all, you guys, because you probably watch it, like, can I let me know what is transfer deadline day? Like, what, like, what is that? Because to me, what it sounds like, it sounds like, like, uh, like trade deadline day, you know what I'm saying? Like how the NBA, NFL, they had trades. Is, is, is that is that the same thing, or is it different? Can can you let me know? Cause like I really never got uh, transfer. Is is that what it is? Right? I think it is. I don't know. I don't know. By 2023, Europe's other leagues generated far less television money than the Premier League, but they also had more rules. Germany blocked ultra wealthy owners from taking over its clubs, and Spain's league placed strict spending limits on its clubs. It often made these clubs healthier financially, but put most of them at a huge disadvantage when bidding for players against Premier League clubs like Chelsea. The year before, new ultra rich American owners had bought Chelsea, decided to splurge on new players, and were prepared to pay huge prices in order to outbid the other Premier League clubs. It offered 121 million euros for one player from Portugal's league and 70 million for one in Ukraine's, plus That's millions crazy. more for another six players, totaling 329 million euros. That's more money than the annual revenue of most European clubs. So Chelsea got these players, and while its spending was extreme, even the worst Premier League clubs were outbidding Europe's major clubs. Southampton bought five players, including one from France for 25 million euros, and Bournemouth bought three players, including one for nearly 23 million euros from Ukraine. Essentially, Premier League clubs are buying up nearly all Europe's best players, and these clubs can't afford to stop them. I know executives at what, by any measure, I would consider big clubs and say Germany. And they're very, very frustrated because every year they will lose their best players to an English club. Some already rich and successful clubs in Europe are trying to match the Premier League spending, but it's caused Spain's Barcelona to spiral into a debt crisis, and Italy's Juventus was caught fudging its accounting. Europe's other clubs, meanwhile, are increasingly choosing to sell their best young players to Premier League clubs. Now, see, I understand they're trying to compete with the Premier League, but I feel like they can, they can create their own Premier League. It's just, I don't know, like, do y'all think they can create, like, their own Premier League, like, the people in Spain and Germany and France and stuff like that? Like, do, like, do you think they can create, like, their own Premier League where, like, it's like, you know what I'm saying? We're, oh, where do you want to go to English? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't really know because I do know the English Premier League is like one of the most popular leagues in football. You know what I'm saying? Then you got Real Madrid. Like, the, people don't know about Spain because Messi and Ronaldo for Real Madrid and, and Barcelona, if I'm being honest. And now people know about Juventus, whatever it's called, because Ronaldo went there. Mm -hmm. he it's left. harder than ever for them to compete. You can see it happening most clearly in the Champions League tournament. Remember back in the 80s when clubs from 16 different countries made the semifinals? In the past 10 years, it was just six. And only these six clubs have won it. Playing in a major Champions League match earns a club millions. So when it's dominated by a handful of rich teams, they get even richer. It definitely affects the competitive balance. Clubs from less significant European leagues, it is, it is gradually forced them out. This runaway wealth imbalance is why a few rich clubs, including six from the Premier League, tried to break away and form their own Super League back in 2021. An outcry by fans forced them to abandon the plans, but the problem didn't go away. We talk in terms of European Super Leagues, but the reality is the Premier League is the European Super League. And they've done it! They've done it! Manchester City have done it! The Premier League has announced that it plans to install stricter rules that limit what clubs can spend on players and it might be starting to enforce its rules better. 
In February 2023, the Premier League charged Manchester City with more than 100 violations of its financial rules, stretching back as far as 2009. If found what? guilty, it could. They can do that? Are they doing this because how, like, they're spending like money, like most, a lot of money on a player? I mean, I understand they're trying to force rules to make it fair for everybody, but I mean, if they have the money, let them spend the money. I get, I understand you want to defend because the smaller clubs, but the smaller clubs can be like the bigger clubs too. It just takes the right owner to spend money and money and money to bring the players to the football club. It's like how the person leveled at Manchester City and now Manchester City is one of the best Premier League teams in, you know what I'm saying, in, in, in England, right? Could be relegated. Wrong? But restricting spending could just make permanent the advantage the rich clubs already have. It's the Premier League's past willingness to let anyone own a club harder to fix. Once you've opened yourself up to a nation state, buying into your organization, very, very difficult, if not impossible, to stop that. Manchester City completes a historic treble. And I'm not sure that it can be done. And that's the first episode of Search Party. Hope you liked it. Hey, that was a good video. Let me know if you like it. Comment down below what y'all want to see next. Hit that subscribe button and join the Nappy Squad because we got more bangers and more videos dropping. But right now, I'm in running with the 2K subs. Y'all know the vibes. Let's ride.